Hi guys, welcome to Pixie Nettery and I am Pixie. Today I prepared something special for you. And not only I, it's a collaboration between me, Dolly Geek, Step for Doll, Harley's Dollhouse, Dollmaker X, Josephine's Creatures, Blurred Colors Art, and I could do that DIY. I'm so excited, hope that you too. We prepared a full fruity basket of really juicy girls for you. My fruit is pomegranate. And today I will show how I made her. Videos of my awesome collaboration mates you can check out in the description box. So I thought that for my first ever collaboration I should pick something challenging and unusual. And I came up with the idea that there are not that many pomegranates represented in art. Of course, I do not take into account that classical art canvases on those pomegranates are commonly spread as nature mort objects. But in modern art, like in fashion, maybe humanization, digital art, etc., there are very few options. How do I know that? When I tried to make research what pomegranate girls should look like, I found not the richest variety of pictures to choose from. So I figured out the pomegranate girl myself and how I see her when I'm thinking about this fruit. More of that, I love the taste and look of pomegranates and I love their color. So it was almost instantaneous pick. The image of this doll popped out in my head the very same evening I chose to make her. The question only was, will I be able to make her just like on the sketch I drew? There were so many tricky elements, but I wanted to execute them necessarily. And some materials were a crucial part of this character. All patterns and fabrics, doll base and everything that is not interesting to watch in the video I prepared in advance. I'm sorry if all that is interesting to you, but it's just not my thing. So, as you can see, this girl will be made just in few tones of red and pink. You already know that pomegranates have rough red skin. Inside it has tight-fitting glossy red aerials, which are separated by thin pink membranes. All these things are pomegranate signature features that make it so special. I want to portray all this into a doll, so you definitely could tell that she is for sure a pomegranate that turns into a girl. And I'm starting by preparing skirt ruffles. In this dress you will see a lot of those, but I still need to make way more than that. I'd even say it is the roughliest dress I ever made. This amount will be just enough. All sewing is made by hands as usual. To the first skirt we go. You will see a lot of skirts in this video, so be prepared. Start the top skirt by hemming the side edges with a hair iron. Now I will attach a row of red ruffles to the bottom part of the skirt. Here we are, ready for the next step. Sewing up the darts. Those will decrease the thickness of the skirt in the waistline. Press seams with iron to flatten. Now iron goes to the ruffles. I prefer to call this process a combing, because you just comb the excessive volume with iron just like a hair to make it look tidy. I gathered the top skirt in the waistline and now it is ready to be decorated a bit with cute pink ribbon. I'm sewing it to the bottom line of the skirt. Later it will create a united look to the whole outfit. Looking nice to me. This pink skirt is made out of cotton and it will be a secondary top skirt. And I'm going to do the same step with ruffles all over again. And here we go, sewing up the darts. Spoiler, there will be so many skirts that even this trick was useless. I had a lot of fun time assembling this dress. Darts are there, so press with an iron to make them flat. Combine the ruffles with iron. The only thing that is left is to thoroughly gather skirts in the waistline. And another skirt is ready. Time to make side petals. Those will be the decorations for one of the sides of the dress. Sewing up ruffles, yeah, again. Looks like a dumpling to me. Gather it in the top line. Press and ruffles with heat. With this piece I want to make the dress look rounder and create a resemblance with the pomegranate shape. I duplicate the same detail but in pink. To me, the logic of this dress is simple. There are a top red layer and the pink membrane layer, just like in pomegranate. I'm planning to decorate the top skirt with quite massive and heavy to doll scale accessories, so I don't want to lose the volume of the dress. That's why I will make not one, but two tool petite coats as support to the top skirts. This one is pink one and I sew it pretty much similar to top skirts. Only one difference, I trim uneven edges of ruffles with scissors. Got this one. Moving to the final petite coat. 
this one will be out of bright red tool. I bet in this video you already have learned how to make voluminous skirts. Attach ruffles to a rectangle, iron. Gather the skirt into a folded piece. Sew in the waistline. Cut the edges if necessary. And you're done with a beautiful skirt. So, summarizing all layers we made, there are red and pink petite coats, pink and red top skirts, and two decorative petals of burgundy and pink colors. Damn, that's a lot! The puffiest skirt I'm making so far. With pins I align petite coats and secondary top skirt together. I put petite coats on such level so their bottom edges don't stick too much outside the top skirt. Make a seam with needle and thread in the waistline to assemble skirt. I already feel that it will be a thick story. A needle is having a tough time coming through the layers. Trim the sticking parts of the petite coat to level it with the pink cotton skirt. Press everything with an iron. The dress was planned to be asymmetrical, so the red top skirt will be put slightly on the side so I could create a cut in front of the dress. I disassemble one of the darts to create an opening on the back of the dress. The doll's legs should be able to come through this opening freely. And we have it! Almost finished skirt of the dress. Now the only thing is left is to sew up the back openings of all skirts we are having here. To finish the skirt base, I'm sewing up the second half of the top skirt to the waistline. I assemble skirts in such way so all of them are placed on slightly different levels. And we are still having these bad guys waiting to be placed on the skirt. Let's do it! Almost forgot to make a back opening for the legs. A drop of glue and a little bit of heat will do the trick. Good, now let's connect it with the skirt. The heavy tool will come in handy with so many layers of fabrics. Pliers are the seamstress's best friend. Put the skirt aside and move to the top. Firstly, I was hopeful that I could attach this top to the skirt, but no. This skirt came out way too thick, so I decided that the top would be just a short. I want to keep the whole thing elegant and fit to the doll's figure well. To achieve that, I'm making darts in front and on the back of the short. Flatten them with an iron. With small scissors I'm making tiny cuts along the neckline. Those cuts will allow making hemming easier. And hem the edge with iron. Go into the sleeves, starting with hemming the cuff. It is a two-parted sleeves and this detail is a puff. With thread and needle I'm gathering both edges of the puff into a rounded shape. I like making those for my dolls. You can watch my Cinderella doll video to see this process in more detail. Connecting two parts of the sleeve. Inner seam I flatten with iron, so the outer side of the sleeve is slick. Sew sleeves into a short arm sockets and iron inner seams. Now it looks much more like a shirt, ain't it? Before finishing it, I want to add a few details. Like this ruffled lace. I want to put it on the neckline. Mmm, sweet, but something's still missing. A ribbon, just like the line on the skirt. And adding the same ribbon on the sleeves. But here I want it with a little twist. So I made the line crossed. When it is done, I can sew up the sides of the shirt. For this shirt, I will make corset ties with metallic rings. With pliers, I bend rings to define the shape. I hemmed the bottom line of the shorts as well. Rings will go here. With edit magic it happened in no time, right? But you can also check out this video for more precise explanation on how I'm doing it. Meanwhile, I added pair of striped panties to the look. The skirt still has to be attached somewhere, so I'm making a small corset. I'm preparing all corset details by making tiny cuts and hemming them with iron until all pieces are ready. In the middle of the corset front piece I'm making a dart.
flatten it with iron. Sewing up the corset sides. And so on and so forth. The whole corset sewing process is a queue of hemming, darts making and ironing. Also a lot, a lot of fitting to the doll and to the skirt. Eventually this piece should be attached to the skirt, so I need it to be at least sized carefully. When all tinkering is done, I trim the bottom edge of the corset with scissors and pray it will match the skirt. Mmm, yeah, I remember this part. Pliers are best friends. It wasn't a perfectly clean seam out there, so I cover imperfections with the same ruffled laces and put a snap on the back opening. Also, I added a row of gold rings as closure. Phew, the dress is done, it is time to make it shine with plenty of decorative elements. With pink cotton I'm making details of future bows. With iron I hem all edges and get rid of the fabric wrinkles. All excessive sticking parts I trim with scissors. One by one I'm preparing all parts so the process is more organized and faster. This stripe will go into another crazy hat. Yeah, I love making weird hats for my dolls, so I recommend you to check out my Lisha doll video, if you like weird hats as well. Long preparations are done. We got a two bow tails, a head belt and a bunch of bow petals. Bigger and smaller ones. Time to assemble. Starting with tails. With a few stitches I merge them. Same with the bigger bow petals. I fold them and poke through them with the needle and thread. At this point my hands are hating me, shakes like crazy, because of overstraining. And if you thought that's it, nope. I still need to sew this tail to the sandwich. Done. With Burgundy color ribbons I'm making the same trims as for sleeves. Like that. I was stubborn enough and I gathered so cool things for this doll you wouldn't believe. With a few more elements I made a bow a bit more complex. And now look at that, the beads. I ordered those online and I picked a bunch of them in case some will fit just right. That one just meh, some trypophobic dream. I want to imitate the pomegranate aerials, not some sort of nightmare fuel, please. These beads are perfect, it looks just like pomegranate aerials. And I want to put it right in the cut of the dress, which I left open for this idea. Firstly, I wanted to sew them up to the dress, but it was too hard to process on the assembled skirt, so at first I glued them on. I paired clear red aerials with shimmery golden ones, because I already decided that this girl will be some kind of royalty wife, aristocrat, queen, I don't know. I just had this vision of this character. Colors of the fruit and its taste, so I felt like that I need to add some gold here. With these red glass beads on the pink skirt, I wanted to create an image of the inner part of the pomegranate. When you open it, how hypnotizing it looks. Glossy clusters of juicy pomegranate aerials adjoining tender pink membranes. At this point, I was so into creating this look that I already knew it will be awesome doll. I promise you that. I made the composition of the glass beads a bit chaotic, so it will look not too bulky. Also, I glued beads only to a visible part of the skirt, because I still need a dress to be not too heavy. But this doll is still the heaviest out of the regular sized monster highs I made so far. With corn thread I still prefer to fix every bit on its place. This doll will be available for sale, so I'm making her sturdy and lasting. That's why if you can't stitch it, better stitch it. If you can't stitch it, then make it such way so you can. The glue evaporated and left white plaque, which I neutralize with a gloss varnish. I cover each bit with a glossy coat to return clearance back. It took some time, but the result was worth it. Forcing a bow onto the dress. And look up here, how perfect is it for this doll, huh? I already have an ideal place for this brush. Fix it on the place with golden lurex thread. And do you want to know how many needles were broken for this outfit? Guess. This poor thing is the sixth. Girl, I will give you all needles I have just be as I planned, okay? Time to make a hat. And I'm starting with base. I decided to make a vintage bonnet. You know these spoon looking hats. It is often can be met in the Lolita style outfits and since my doll is pomegranate, you know, this spoon shape just asked for, you will see what it asked. Whilst I'm busy assembling all boring parts of the hat together, 
let me better tell you about the idea behind the bonnet of this doll. The look of this doll is inspired by fashion of the 19th century and Lolita style. Specifically 80-20s, 40s something years for a bonnet. It was exactly the time when such hats were popular. Basically those were stand hats. Often made out of straw, but a lot of them were just fabric accessories. Element of fashion. Also you could see artificial flowers, feathers, ribbons, laces and more things on them. Back in the days these elements allowed women to personalize their look. I found this type of hat extremely suiting for my idea and the dress I made for the character. Bonnet can be different shapes depending on what period of time it is. I didn't try to meet historical accuracy in this look, so I tended to be freer with my choices. I made an exaggerated big peak for my bonnet. And the sides of it are less wide, so I can show more hair and face, just like in Lolita style. The base of my bonnet is almost done, and just a few minor details left to be completed. Adding a pink belt to the back part of the bonnet. And this bow that I made off camera. Sew it on the side of the head. Also add pair of ribbon ties. So it is time to bring some personalization to my doll. You might already guessed it. I will make a mini pomegranate inside the bonnet peak with the same beads I used on the dress. Just as before I glue beads one by one onto the fabric. The plastic sheet that I put inside the peak will secure another side of the bonnet from the glue bleeding and will hold the shape of the head straight up. I glue beads close one to another in a few repetitive rows. Unlike the dress, I want beads here to be dense with no light pink elements. This way I can show the rich and organized structure of the pomegranate aerials. The red fabric lining of the bonnet makes glass beads shine even brighter, just like if those were for real filled with sour sweet juice. I have some space beadless because the head of the doll will be there, so I need a free place left. Adding another pomegranate brush, but this time to the bow on the head. I shape the bonnet into a round arch and let it dry this way. Glue will harden and the bonnet will take its recognizable shape. With varnish I erase the evaporated glue trays to bring freshness to the beads back. And it's time to add more accessories to this look, like a basket, why not? At first I wanted to buy miniature basket somewhere, but it's just not much time left till the deadline of this project, so I decided to make it myself. With a cord and metallic base I'm making a low-cut basket. Basically I will glue the cord onto the half sphere base until I will get a big enough basket shape. The trickiest part is to begin reeling the cord onto the base. The farther, the easier this process gets. I think a basket this tall will be just enough. For a handle I'm taking this plastic corset bone and I will wrap it into the same cord as well. Ends of the cord I'm fixing with few stitches on both sides. With the lighter I'm getting rid of the small sticking fibers to make the basket napless. With a coat of glue, I'm extra sealing all swirls on the place. I'm doing the same to a handle. These 3D printed pomegranates will perfectly go into the basket I just made, but I need to add some colors with my model paints. These paints are already quite saturated, so one coat will be enough. With a piece of pink fabric, I'm making a square napkin. I will glue it to the bottom of the basket. When it is done, time to put fruits inside. A glue heat gun will do the trick. 
I try to put them snugly to each other to fit as much as I can. It's done, but now they are looking a bit flat. Let's do a little bit of shading here to add some dimension. Okay, that's better. To add more life to this basket, I will stick in some greenery here and there. Perfect, but still not enough. I feel that golden bits will look right with this basket. Yep. As a finishing touch, I will make a red bow to put on this basket. Looking cute, so let's place it on the handle. Just like that. And the chef's kiss. Mmm, yummy. I skipped making shoes for this doll, so I just ordered these beauties online. Pomegranate has a crown-like tip on the top, so I decided to make one for my doll. But as an actual crown. Also, I added a choker to her neck. Hair I made off camera out of acrylic yarn. My fingers were hating me so much for all burns I made to them, but it was worth it. And we're coming to a face-up part of this video. Today I'm gonna draw on the Draculaura's face. At last, not shrunk head. After painting so much on the heads that were shrunk, it was so much pleasure to paint on the touched one. Vinyl doll heads are changing their structure and texture if you previously modified them with edge tone. They become harder and originally vinyl is having a slightly elastic feeling to it. When its tone was involved, it destroys elastic components in the vinyl, so the head becomes harder. Some likes it, some don't, like me. I prefer the original texture of the head because it is easier for pencil to slide around the surface. See that? Good pencils shouldn't do that. And no, I wasn't dropping my pencils or anything. The good pencil will not be that shattered only if you will not jump on it. It is a quality issue. The core is just fragile itself. I dominantly draw my lines with pencils because of my shaky hand issue, so I like my pencils to be sharp as nice when I'm working. And many of you asked which one I'm using. And the answer is Prismacolor watercolor pencils, but I do not recommend them, and that's why. I have a few boxes of these pencils and the later production was this disappointing. So you already know that this doll was inspired by the 19th century in Lolita fashion, but let me tell you more precisely about my references. Have you heard about the movie Gone with the Wind? This one, from 1939. I personally never watched it, believe it or not. But I know the character Scarlett O'Hara playing by Vivian Leigh and her canonical dresses. I believe that some of her looks are just so mesmerizing that I just wanted to use some elements from them in my doll's dress. Like this summer floral dress. Look how elegant it is. Revealed shoulders make such a gorgeous accent to the face and neck. Or this one, same neckline. But did you know that it was quite a popular silhouette in the 1840s? Specifically, the character of Scarlet is from that era. In these vintage illustrations, you can see what dresses from this time looked like. And the face of this doll. Have you ever tasted pomegranate? If you do, then you know that it has a sweet sour flavor to it. It is a rich and versatile taste. Really unique and memorable. Also, the arils of pomegranates have seeds inside, which makes the whole experience slightly more complex. <laughs> Pomegranate is one of the oldest fruits known to humanity. In ancient Egypt it was used in medicine. Often it was depicted as a symbol of prosperity and ambition. In the Greece pomegranate was the fruit of Persephone, the goddess of the underworld. The myth of Persephone prominently features her eating pomegranate seeds, requiring her to spend a certain number of months in the underworld every year. The number of seeds and therefore months vary. During the months that Persephone spent in the underworld with her husband Hades, her mother Demeter mourned and no longer gave fertility to the earth. This was an ancient Greek explanation for the seasons. Pomegranate has a versatile history all over the world, so I just couldn't see this character as a simple one. I portrayed her as beautiful aristocratic young lady with a slightly arrogant expression on her face but still soft and bright. Sweet and sour. Since the time of this video is running out, I have an announcement to make. As I said earlier, I'm selling this doll. 
So if you are interested in buying her, please contact me via my Instagram for more details. And if you are already the owner of this doll, oh boy, you are the lucky one to have her. She's my original character and one of a kind mademoiselle and I'm happy if you picked her for your collection. My wholesome gratitude. And it is still not the very end of this video. I want to show you a little bit of backstage and how I'm preparing my backgrounds for my photos and video sets. I don't know if you'd be interested in those, but you know what, I will show you anyway. Just a little bit of an extra inside before I will show the finished doll. You know, I try to make for each doll a proper setting, to highlight all her advantages. Also to guide the viewer even for a moment into her small world. Create an illusion of a new universe behind each doll. Everything I leave for myself are those clips and photos of my creations. I am not a collector, I am creator. I find more pleasure in creating things from nothing. Some of my dolls I'd wish to keep for myself, but life is so that I can't do that. With my videos I want not only to give you, my audience, the best doll custom experience, but also to create a memory of my creation. For myself. That's why you should make an effort and leave me your comment and like as your thank you to me for sharing my experience with you. I'd highly appreciate your care and attention to my art. Basically what I usually do to put my background together is I'm roaming around my drawers and boxes and picking all fragments that I found matching for the current story and look of the doll. I try to create a mood. Is it something creepy or something modern? Maybe vintage? Decorations not always should have much sense, they should create a picture. A vibe if you'd like it more. So today I created a pomegranate girl story for you. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. Check out my Collaboration Mates videos, they did a great job too. And thank you guys for having me in this collaboration, it was so much fun to work with you. And it is the end of the video. Stay tuned to see a finished doll. And it is time for me to say see you in my next videos, guys. Have a sweet day. Bye.
Видите, мой голову возит. Мое степусь. Ну, пусть, 